Oh, that's a clean shot right there. No slices. No slicing? Okay. That's your go-to shot now because for several reasons. Number one, you don't still don't trust to step on that foot that was injured. But also, I feel like when you hit your back end, there's not a lot of spin there and you're scared to miss. Yeah. So you're slicing way too much. You're right. So the next few, hit the back end. Don't slice it, okay? See what I mean? It's an automatic. It's automatic. When you get to the back end after a forehand, it's always a slice. Again. Hello. Another one, come on. Up, 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 up. Good work. Forehand's looking very clean. Oh, good. Yeah, man. Shamir, here's what I think is happening on your back end. Okay. First of all, I already told you, you slice a lot. Yes. That's from a lack of trust, because your slice is pretty good. You know it's going to go in, and if you hit your back end, there's a chance to miss, okay? There's also an issue with your foot. We talked about this. Yeah. It is what it is. We'll do what we can, but you have to load that right foot on 90% of your back hands. Yeah, when I do that, I feel okay. You feel okay, okay. Yeah, I could, I could, it's just... That's good. In the midst of the rally. The yeah, run. but if you want me to analyze a little bit more accurately, here's what I think is happening. Okay. You are able to put spin on your backhand, but when you do it, you do it very slowly. Okay. There's not a lot of racket hit speed there. So a lot of your top spin backhands are landing short. They're going on the service line. Yeah. They're very attackable. Yes. When you let your backhand go and you hit it hard, that's when it flattens out. And there's a little bit of uh, a movement here that shouldn't be there with okay. probably your forearm or your wrist and you start spraying long. Okay. So you probably know this, so to counteract that, you end up slowing it down too much. Okay. And you do get spin, but it's too weak. In today's lesson, I'm going to teach you progressions where we're going to build topspin the right way, where we're going to build trust so you can hit it uh, with more racket head speed. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, grab your towel real quick, if you don't mind. Okay. We're going to hit from a lower position, okay? Okay. Right when the ball's coming to my back end, I feel uncomfortable just setting up for it. Well, there's a lack of trust. Often you also are playing it like this. You're playing it here. You're, you're kind of going back on it. You shouldn't lose your foundation. Remember we talked about this a couple years ago. Pulling back? Yeah, pulling back on the backhand. So, so the problem is... I'm pulling back on every backhand. Well, the problem is that you can pull back, but you don't want to fall back. So when you lose your foundation here, now you're falling back. Yeah. So pulling back means like you even see Federer doing sometimes. I mean, you go like this a little bit, that's fine, but you got to hold your foundation. Yeah. But that's a whole separate story yeah. that's independent of this. Put one leg um, here on okay. the corner of the towel. Yeah. And we're going we're gonna to play it from here, okay? And you're going to bring the, you're going to put one knee on the ground. Okay. Well, first things first, what grip do you have on your backhand? Eastern backhand. So that in itself is a great sign because sometimes plays with a continental backhand grip will have a more disadvantageous position of the wrist at contact. Yeah. And topspin is more challenging. So with this grip, the thumb is more underneath the racket and a vertical swing path is more intuitive, more natural, okay? Okay. So, so this is this, grip, right? No, your grip is perfect. Okay, okay. All right, now all you got to do is just swing up aggressively, okay? Do it again. Go again. Swing up aggressively. Good. Again. You see the amount of spin that's on the ball? Yeah. Come on, a little bit faster. And again, faster, Shamir. Come on, faster. One more time. Faster on the ball. One more time. Faster. That one flattened out. Yeah, that one flattened out. Okay, because... So look, you, you can flatten it out, and two things that can happen. First of all, you can hit into the net, or if the racket face is open, it'll go straight out. Yes. So you have to hit the ball on the curve, okay? Come. Go again. Up, 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 up. One more time. Up fast. Man, I really need to work on this. Come on, go up, Shamir. Hand above the level of your shoulder. That's the key. Come on. Hand goes above the level of the shoulder. Go again. Now, stay as sideways as you can. We're going to get to that in a minute. Come. I want you to try to stay sideways. Don't try to rotate your upper body, okay? Stay as sideways as you can and let the arm go around the body. Come again. One more time. Come on. Faster. All right. Now I'm going to feed you. Okay. Same thing. Stay like that. Oh, stay stay like that. I'm going to feed it very accurately. Okay. And again. Come on. Again. Rotate, come right? on. Don't rotate so much. Go again. That's too flat. Come on. Up, 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 up. 
better, Shamir. That's it. Come again. Way better. That was a beautiful top and back end. Okay. Now you can remove the towel. There you go. Come on. Swing up. Go again, Shamir. Up. Hand above the level of the shoulder. Come on. Up. Better. Come again. Again. Come. Better. Again. Again, Shamir. Come on. Yes. Look at that spin. There we go. That's the one that I like. All right. Did you see uh, the video of Federer uh, hitting against the wall? That one like viral. Everyone posted it. Yeah, you yeah. You saw that one? Yeah, yeah. So I went in and analyzed a lot of those backhands. Okay. So Federer's backhand is, in my opinion, the best topspin backhand. Fabrinka mm -hmm. hits it a little bit more flat. Yeah. But Federer has more spin on his. And one thing that he does is that he stays more sideways. So he'll rotate into the ball, but then once he hits, he kind of holds the upper body. He holds. Yeah. And then the hand goes way up and back. The hand goes here. And that is the key to topspin because if you take a look at his racket, and in that wall video, I made like a little short from that. You see the racket traveling vertically. The tip of the racket goes this. Yeah. So you get so much topspin. So if the tip of the racket comes through this way, this is more of a flat back end, yes. a Brinka style. And a lot of players accompany that with more rotation. So they'll rotate more like this, like I do Domin that. Dominic Thiem. I so you still get topspin that way, but you don't get the amount of RPMs and the heavy type of topspin that, that Federer gets. So the key is we want to set your back end up with a lot of um, loading, with a lot of turn. We do want to rotate into the ball, but we want to hold the upper body. We don't want to rotate so much and just have the arm swing yeah. in a vertical sense across the body. Now, one thing that's going to help this vertical swing path that's so necessary is trying to come underneath the ball a little bit. And I mentioned the Federer wall video. If you slow-mo it, you yeah. see that his racket and his hand come underneath the ball every time prior to him making contact. Yeah. So once you get up off okay. the stool, we're going to remove this. And now we've already got comfortable with a more vertical swing path from a lower place by being down low. I'm going to put my racket here and you're going to swing under it prior to hitting the ball. Okay. All right, you don't need the loop right now. You don't need the loop. Oh, just you start, come a little closer to me. Okay. All right, here, come down with the racket, down. Oh, just. Okay, here, you're gonna come from underneath my racket and you're gonna swing up okay. like you did before. Go again, another one. Come underneath my racket mm -hmm. and swing up. There you go. Do it again. You see this? Yeah. So when you, when you come from under, it makes the vertical swing path more possible because it's all about momentum, vertical momentum. When you come from a lower place, you're more likely gonna to continue to go up. Up. Because you're already going up to make contact with the ball, so the racket is just gonna continue going upwards. Yeah. If you come at the ball more straight, here's the ball, you come at it straight, uh. you have to manufacture the vertical movement. It's yes. possible, but it's more difficult. Okay. Okay, so let's do it again. That makes you sense. You put your racket underneath mine. Okay. And you come here. Oh, go sorry. again. Come on, sorry. let the let the hand go all the way up like Roger. Come again. There it is. Come again. There it is, Shamir. Do you feel more topspin? Yeah, I'm holding the. Hold your torso once you have made contact. Okay, good. That's good. Yes. That's Come good. again. Hold your torso a little, a little bit more, even. Watch a little me. A little bit more, yeah. yeah. You're gonna come in here. You're gonna rotate forward, and you're gonna hold here like this. There will be some a little bit of. Rotation, you're not going to be completely sideways like this. Yeah. There will be a little bit of this, but it's not going to be full like this. Oh, open. I, yeah. I say open like every back end. It's not wrong. And even Federer sometimes opens. If I'm going cross court, maybe it helps. That's absolutely correct. Sometimes yeah. on cross court balls, yeah. um, not always. Players will a little bit more open a little bit more who are more close, but Federer will also open up more when he flattens out his back end because he doesn't always hit it with. A lot of tops me he knows how to flatten it out too yeah okay so it's not wrong to open up Wait. what we're trying to do with your back end is build trust so you can hit hard because huh. you're hitting it so soft yeah. and you're slicing it because there's a lack of trust on that side yes it's built up over the last two years with your injury and all that yeah so this top spin can build trust because in essence it slows the ball down yeah. and you can swing faster but you need to swing the right way because before if you swing fast and then something comes through here in the front, now you're gonna start spraying the ball crazy. That's what I was doing. Okay. Yeah, or yeah. another thing that you do is just hit it but spin, but very slowly and carefully and falling back on it like this. And now the ball is just kind of sitting there and it can be crushed. Yeah. All right, yeah, here we go that's again. True. Here we go again, come on. 
Look at this. That's way better, Shamir. Come on. Look at these backhands. That's a good one? Yes. Come over here a little closer. There you go, Shamir. Come again. Now, have you ever heard me say accommodate the swing path? Yeah, I heard you say that. All right. What do you mean by that again? All right. So if you, <laughs> if your hand is trying to go up, right, and your body is not accommodating that movement, let's say you're, you're, like, you're going like this and you're trying to go up with the hand but the body's staying down, okay. that's not accommodating the swing path. Oh, let the body go with it. Yeah. So okay. what happens, like for example, on Federer's back, and I'll show you, is that he, he loads, he bends his knees, and he hits. And when the racket starts to go up, the body goes up to he straightens his legs. Uh -huh. He gets on his toes like this. The heels get off the ground. And I guess, check this out. When the racket flips back, he actually puts the weight towards the back foot. He puts it towards the back foot because he's accommodating the swing path. So now we're going to start hitting normal. Okay. I'm going to feed you some balls. And hopefully, your body's going to remember some of these progressions. Okay. But your job is to try to come from underneath the ball. Okay. And try to go up as high as you can with your hand while not rotating so much. Right, not, yes. And accommodating this whole movement with your body by lifting the body up. Got to it. To help the hand go up. Okay, okay. stay right it. here. I'm going to feed you some. That was my favorite one so far. That was even better, Shamir. Nice. Okay. Do you feel the spin? Because it feels different. Listen, it's going to feel completely different doing this, okay? versus this oh, you this, see that? that was more lift that was more lift the other one was more smack yes right, yeah. yes you could say that the one was smack the other one was lift come yeah. again okay a little bit thin mm. another one come not bad come again i like that one a lot but i need more rack ahead speed come on trust trust good and again yeah. go even faster from here faster Yes, and faster, Shamir. Come on. Good. Okay, now go down the line. Down the line. Come. You can still put spin even though it's down the line. It's one of the biggest myths. You can still top spin down the line. Good, and don't steer down there. Come on, trust. More, Shamir. Come on, make it vertical. Don't push and steer. I can see the racket going here. When you go here, in other words, when you make contact, you continue here. Now you're steering, guiding, pushing. It takes a spin out. Okay. Yeah, I was getting Come I was on. more through it, right? Yes. I need to more up. Up and across. Up and out. Or up and across. Up and across, yeah. That's the swing path. Look. So many years of... Tip of the racket going up and across like this. That's what creates spin. Yeah. So, so many years with other coaches. Go more through, more through, more through, and then finish. You know, like that's... It's yes. stuck in my brain. Okay. Don't, don't do that. Here we go. Come. Caught it a little bit towards the tip of the racket. Come again. Okay, I like it, that but one felt good. it's good. But I need a little bit more speed, more acceleration. Come on. Better and more acceleration, Shamir. Come. Yes, and again, come. Acceleration. More, Shamir. More. Come. Oh no. Sorry. That was that was the one where there was. That was a slap. Slap, additional movement here. You make contact with the ball and there was some movement here. Yeah. When you do that, you lose control and the ball sprays uh, wildly. Yeah, goes, I felt, I felt the difference. Fast. You can feel something yeah. there, yeah? I got okay. Get. Okay, it's too soft. Come on, I need more pace. Faster. Good. Hold your torso rotation. Come on, hold, hold. Yes, now you're looking like Roger. Better. And again, come on, Shamir. Another one, accelerate quickly upwards. Come on, quickly. Oh no, sorry. Remember when I had my racket next to you like this and I made you go under the ball? Yes. I want you now to consciously think about getting your hand okay. underneath the level of the ball. Just focus on your hand. Yeah, well, the ball is here, your hand is underneath. Right here. Yeah. So I'm going. Yeah, if you come in like this, look, if it's here, no. yeah, like that. All right, go again. Yes, Shamir, come on. Go up fast. Better. Come again. Come again. More speed on that. Speed. Better. Take the wrist game through on that one. You kind of slapped at it. Don't slap it. It's not bad. Come again. We need more pace. Okay, Shamir. Now we're going to recalibrate the contact zone a little bit. Okay. Yeah, because when we're talking about what happens to the racket, right around the contact 
it's very hard to feel exactly what's going on. Yes. Whether you are like Federer and going where the tip of the racket stays through to the outside. Most players have the, the racket come through a little bit naturally. Okay. So we're going to recalibrate that area and I want you to feel more what's happening there. So stand right there. Okay. And come into the blue. Come inside a little bit. Okay. All right, come a little closer to me. Okay. All right, come into contact like this. Okay, we're going to make contact right here. Okay. And now I'm going to drop the ball and you're going to start from here. Okay. You're going to start from there. here and you're going to concentrate on the tip of the racket, not going like this. Right. Okay, not going here, but rather here. Oh. You see this? Here. Oh, that's a All right. Game so game. not yeah. here, but more here. Oh, All right. This and thing going yeah. Oh. And since you're starting from the contact, since you're starting there, you have a little bit more awareness what's happening to the racket. Watch. Because when you talk about awareness of the racket, yeah. it's going to be <laughs> impossible to be aware what the racket is doing at contact because that's happening in milliseconds. So stay right there. Start here. Start at the contact, and we're going to recalibrate the contact zone. Okay. Okay, I'm going to hold your racket. Now you're not going to get any power, okay? That's <laughs> yeah, why yeah. I have you standing closer. Come again. Go again. It's hard. Come on, swing out fast, though. Up fast. Go good. Again. Come. Better. And again. <laughs> okay, we're getting some here. Come. You're holding it though for me. I can't Come hit. Come on. Go wait, again. Wait, let's how, let's get closer. Wait, right, wait, can you let go sooner so I can? No. No. Because you want to take your racket back. That's why. No, that's... I, won't, I promise. <laughs> I promise. So why do you want me to let go sooner? Like so I can go like this. All right, listen, it's not the first time I've done this progression, and naturally, what people do if I'm not holding the racket, they go down. They start here and then they go back anyway. Okay. You right. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So give me your racket, I'll show you. Okay. So this is what happens they start here and they think they're not taking the racket back, but then when they attempt to swing at the ball, they still go like this. Oh, they go under. Okay. No, not under, but they go back a little bit. Back. Uh, okay. Yes, so that's why I'm holding your racket. Okay. Yes. All right, All right. go right there. Go on the pickleball line. Go on the pickleball line. Pickleball. That's why I love having pickleball lines on the court. It's additional points of reference, man. <laughs> it's beautiful. Don't you like it? Yeah, I love it. All right, the come a little closer. The here we one. go. I'm holding right here. And go up. Okay, come again. Uh, so um, so that you want me to go like that? Exactly. Right? Not like, the, don't let it break the plane. Don't let this thing go. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I don't think about that when I hit it back in. You can't. Yeah. That's my whole point of the, with the uh, recalibration. So maybe I'm doing this a little bit. Listen. Yeah, instead of... No, no, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the intuitive tennis methodology, but there are certain things inside of a stroke. Yeah. These intricate little details of the stroke that are happening intuitively. Right. And that part right there is one of them, where it's absolutely impossible that we can be conscious of what's happening to the racket face exactly around the contact. Why? Because it's happening in milliseconds. Yeah. You hit the ball very quick on the back end. Yeah. So what happens to a lot of players when they slow down this contact zone in order to feel the ball more, they end up pushing the ball. Mm -hmm. And they slow down and end up holding the ball on the string too long and they're steering and pushing it. Like that's what my problem is. Sometimes. So, so, yeah. Yeah. so when you make spin, you make a very soft, very, very pushy spin. Yeah. Okay. So with this, you can be more aware of how the racket is going to travel right after contact because you're starting from here. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. All right, again. So go up, go Back up. up a little bit, yellow. We said pickleball line, remember? Go up, go up, right? Go yeah. up, and across. but there's two ways to go up. You can go up like this, or you can go up like this. That's the one. Wait. I want you to go up like Second that. One. Second one. Okay. With the tip of the racket going over the ball. Ready? One more time. Did I do it right? You did it. Come again. Why are you hitting so soft? Go ahead and smack that, that uh, thing. Come on. Just okay. hit, like, okay. So, so you got to get over the net from here. Oh, Come okay, on. Okay, okay, okay. Hold the racket. Why are you so soft on it? Come on, hold the racket. Okay. There you go. So you know how to do it. You were hitting it so soft before. You're supposed to, okay, see that? I did like a whipping motion. Is that wrong? A whipping motion? Yeah, I feel like I want like, I used all my like wrist in that. I didn't really like. The wrist is involved in the backhand, no doubt about it. Because when you come around here in this area, this zone right here, yeah. that's where the wrist flips and rolls. Is the wrist rolling right here? No. That's not an isolated movement. Right. Okay, so you're just going up like this with the arm and the wrist comes in it later. It feels like I'm forcing this heavy racket to go. 
Well, that's, that's your, your that, that's your problem. You're the one. You're the one that loves heavy rackets. Yeah, but you're exposing <laughs> right. the worst part of it right go, now. Go, go. Okay. Back it up. You're gonna start from here, and you're gonna go up. Come on, this is a recalibration exercise. <laughs> Why is it so hard? Okay. Now listen. Wait, you want me to? You want me to go like this, like right? What all the way. Like? I want you to listen. Here, slide over. I'm gonna show you. Okay, all the way to the. Watch this, Shamir. Hold my racket like I did yours. Okay. I right, watch this. When do I let go? Now. You see, I go like this. Again, start there. Again. All the way to the ear. Yeah, as, as high as it possibly can go. So now because I lose this part, the, the acceleration, yeah. I have to accelerate from the contact. I'm going to do it very slowly. I'm going to be more aware of what's happening to the racket head. I can see, actually see it going like this, as opposed to when the racket is coming through extremely fast yeah. And it's over in milliseconds. So if we do enough of these progressions, there's a good chance that the body will remember this so that when you hit your normal back end, this movement will be there for you. Yeah. Okay? So this thing going that way. Absolutely. Not this, not, Go don't, don't break the plane, right? I don't even know what you mean by like that. There's like a plane here and I'm by like opening my racket a little bit, right? Yes. Go behind the pickup okay. ball line. Okay. And again, come right here. Hold the racket. Why are you so loose, man? Come on, I hold. You be, I, I'm always loose when I hold. But, but look, I can grab the racket from your hand. That's how loose it is. Yeah, so be a little bit more. Like okay, that. this is the looseness test. Okay. Okay, do okay. it again. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> it's too loose. Too okay. loose. Okay. It's good. There. Okay. All right. You don't want to be stiff, but you don't. You don't want to hold the racket like this, like like barely hanging onto it. Yeah. Come on, grip that thing. Okay, like this. Not too tight, not like you were squeezing it to death. Yeah. Back up, pick a ball line, please. Okay. Again. Better. Okay. Go again. Better. Uh, again. Net, oh, sorry, I don't it's want all to right. Don't worry about that. Awkward when you're holding the right. Okay, Come on. Hold it. Oh, 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 hey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Again. Here we go. Come. I got it. I got it. Best one so far. Do it again. I just it feels so awkward. Okay, come on. All right, come on. Of course it's awkward. Do it again. Because you get no momentum, no backswing. You get no power. Better. Okay. Good. Are you more aware of where the racket is going? Yeah, the tip is going up. Absolutely. Not, Beautiful job. Not like going... It's not going, it's not going... it's not going through here like this. Yeah, it's not... All right? Yeah, it's just going All right, one more time. Up. Come on, a okay, couple up. more. Tip up. Yeah. Tip up. Better. Tip and up. again, come. <laughs> and one more time, Shamir. Come up, on. Tip up, tip Ready? Up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, I wasn't able to hit it. You were so eager to, to hit the I ball. I wanted to just hit the stupid Your thing. Your eyes like became really wide. I wanted to see how, how much you like hitting the ball. All right, here we go. Here one go. more time. Very good. All right, let's back okay. up and do it for tip, real now. Tip up. Absolutely. Tip up, my friend. Tip up. Nothing. What are you talking about? We don't have to remember that much. This is a progression. Don't think so much, Shamir. Yeah. The whole point of this progression is so that you don't think about that part. That's the whole purpose of it. Because I never want you to think about what is happening to the racket face exactly around the contact. Okay. That part should happen naturally. So through these progressions, the idea is that we do enough of them so that there are changes being made intuitively so don't have to, think about to your swing path. Okay. You don't have to think about right. it. Right, so you don't, don't have to. Yeah, you can do it. turn your brain off. Yeah, just go, bam. All right, we're going now. All right. Come on, come. Caught it a little too high there. Might come Costco, right? Yeah, Costco, please. Come. That was all good. Yeah, I came through a little too much. Come again. Better. Another one, come. In there. Came through a little too much. Come. Here we go. Hold sideways, hold sideways more, Shamir. Hold yourself sideways. Better, and accelerate a little bit more. Come, hold. Better, come again. Hold. Maybe my favorite back end you hit so far. How'd that one feel? That's all good. Okay, let me feed you some more, okay? Okay. Better, come again. Okay, that one I like better. Let me rally with you a little bit, okay? That's our last progression. We rally cross court. Better. Come on. Better. 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 Good. Go, Shamir. Go. Come on. Good, Shamir. 
Better, yes. No. 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 Not bad. Not bad. Yes. Go. Because I have a blister, I'm kind of not accelerating as much. Okay, last four. Four more and we're done. I don't want you playing with a blister. Yes. Yes. Okay, back to the middle. I got three more. Yes. Go again. The last one, Shamir, play it out. Go one more, go cross court. Yes, come on. Yes. What we did today didn't transform your backhand. No. We need to do every single day those drills where you're kneeling down. You, you do a 5,000 of those in a, in a week. Kneeling down and going like this, going like this. Then you do another 5,000 uh, on the stool. You do another 5,000 with the racket here where you're coming underneath. You have to do tens of thousands of reps to transform your back end. Yeah. Because you've been playing tennis already for many years. Yeah. And so one it's lesson is going to do absolutely nothing. Right. But we understand what we need to do. Yeah. We understand the challenges on your back end where you are too scared to hit it and you slice everything. Mm -hmm. That in itself is a huge problem. Yeah. Because you're not someone that wants to hit a back end. That, <laughs> there are some players who are really good at slice back ends, okay? Yeah. Like yeah. Steffi Graf or someone like that, that, that yeah. live and die off their slice back and you're not that, doing that imagine. on your own terms. Yeah. You're doing it, that as a survival right. tactic yeah, yeah, yeah. to stay in the rallies. Mm -hmm. You don't really want to slice, you want to hit your backhand. Right. Right? So in order to hit it, to, to be able to hit it, we need to get more spin on it. And that's, yeah. that's the, what we did today, we did some progressions and we have to continue to recalibrate that contact area and, and continue to work hard. Yeah. And just be patient. In the meantime, I also would like you to hit all one-handed backhand top spins and not do any slices when you're playing. Yeah. Um, in a non-match situation, if you're playing a match, mm -hmm. I want you to win and do whatever it takes to win. If yeah. that means you have to slice something, okay, no problem. Right. But if you're just hitting with someone, tell yourself no, no slice. No slice. And be very strict with yourself. Yeah. Because you go to that slice all the time now. Yeah. And I saw that <laughs> in the, the last couple of matches you played last year that we recorded. You had the same problem. You were slicing everything, and the yeah. backhand was a huge weakness. Yes. A huge hole in your game. So we're going to work on it, and we're going to get it to where it needs to be, okay? Sounds good. Big Come move. on. Yes. <laughs> Look, I see my little blister. That is so funny. I had the blister on the same spot. Yeah. Do you know why you got the, the blister? Bevel, the bevel's right there. Yes. But yeah. you know why you got the blister? Because I hit so many backhands because you hit so many backhands and you haven't hit them in a long time. You were slicing everything. It's completely different. different. Right, yeah, my, my, my hand doesn't have well, that. It's a different position of the bevel. So when you're in a slice, there's more, it's more flat here. When you go eastern backhand, that bevel is hitting right the there. Corner is, the corner is hitting here. And guess what? What happened to me? I had blisters throughout the whole last year when I was working on my one-handed backhand. <laughs> yeah. And it opened up like that. You're going to build up callus and it's going to go away. Yeah. I well, had, when I was playing years ago before my injury yeah. and I hit back ends more of the, I did have a big thick one here. It's normal. But then because of my injury and years of not playing, that went away. Yeah. I lost that. So now it's good. It's going to be built back. If I, I know how much that hurts. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not fun to have a blister right there. It's terrible. Yeah. And it's only on the back end. It doesn't really hurt on the forehand. You know why? Yeah, that's what I was like. Let me hit, the what do you have? You have an Eastern forehand grip? Actually, no, it hurts there too now. Shoot. Yeah. Because there again, it's more of a flat surface here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I'm going to rest up, man. Yeah. Take a week off and then we'll go back. I have to, to take a week off of this? Yeah. There's no way to tape that. I know. I mean, you can uh, be a man and just play with a blister. <laughs> no, that, that hurts too much. I did, dude. I did. I had a blister. I just keep playing with it. You know, I had to power through. But it hurts. It's not fun. It hurts a lot. Yeah, it hurts a lot. Yeah. Yeah. The tip of the racket up. never comes through. You see how it goes around? Up and around. You see also how he holds his torso rotation? Yeah. He holds. And he, he accommodates he, he doesn't he doesn't rotate now he does rotate into the contact of course he's got a huge shoulder turn yeah he rotates into the contact um but he holds but it he holds it and look at the tip of the racket up and across now the, the did hard, i do any of those t right like that you know to be honest with you shamir um the racket head was probably still coming through i can't really see it but it's unlikely like what i told you at the end that one lesson is going to result in yeah. you swinging like Federer. I feel like some I did th there where, are some where, that where you I went did. up yeah, and across. Some that you did. The ones where we did the recalibration, 
uh, a lot more of those you did, but um, one lesson is not going to change yeah. the swing path. We got to continue to work on this. Yeah. And um, maybe, maybe when you post the video, worry, I can but, study yeah, it. Yeah, but so. don't worry about this. Uh, let's just uh, continue to work and mm -hmm. you continue to do the fundamentals yeah. we talked about. And uh, This is one of them though, up and across. But, well, you want to intend to finish. You want to intend to finish a certain way. Yeah. Uh, with your hand going as high as possi possible with a fully extended arm. Yeah. Um, and l let's not over uh, stress on the contact itself because that can lead to pushing and steering. Right. Okay? Thank All you, right, Nick. Man.